Let's take a look at linear factorization over the reals one more time, and then we'll take a look at some non-real numbers today. The first thing we're going to do is make a list of PRCs. In the numerator, we put the factors of 5 plus minus 1 and 5. In the denominator, go the factors of 6 plus minus 1, 2, 3, and 6. And now we're going to make every single possible combination. Let's divide them all by 1 plus minus 1 and a 5. Let's divide them each by 2 plus minus 1 half and 5 halves. Let's divide them by 3 plus minus 1 third plus minus 5 thirds. And we'll divide by 6. 1 sixth and 5 sixths. Okay, so there's our list of PRZs. The first one I'm going to test is positive 1. Our coefficients are 6, negative 7, negative 14, 18, negative 5. Please try to test tiny so you got a lot of space over here to work. Some people take up the whole space right in the middle and then they run out of space. We'll drop down the 6. 6, negative 1, negative 1, negative 15, negative 15, negative, oh, positive 3. No, it's not working. Okay. Um, would you like to buy a hint? All right, if I had some more space or some more people, I'd say let's try negative 1. I'm going to give you a clue, though. And it's a fraction PRZ that's going to work. So let's try 1 half. Okay, we're going to walk through how this, this works. Same leading coefficients, because I didn't find a PRZ to work. Doing the fractions, you just want to talk yourself through it a little bit. So drop down 6. What's half of 6? 1 half times 6, you're going to be dividing it by a 2. That's what's happening. And you get 3. And we get negative 4. What's negative 4 times a half? What's half of it? Divide it by 2. You get negative 2. Add those together, negative 16. Half of negative 16 is negative 8. 10, half of 10 is 5. Oh, look at that. We found one. As soon as you find one, your job is to write f of x in factored form. The first factor we found was x minus a half. And then our polynomial is 6x to the third minus 4x squared minus 16x plus 10. Now this looks kind of weird because we're not used to seeing numbers like this. Okay, so let me give you a little hint here. When a fraction PRZ works, when a fraction PRZ works, okay, please write down these notes that I give you here because this helps you when you go do your homework and stuff. Here's what you're going to do. Factor out a constant. Factor out a constant. And this always works. The polynomial, the original f of x, doesn't have any fractions. Okay, so we're not going to have any fractions here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to factor out a 2. So we're going to factor out a 2 from this uh, cubic right here. 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 8x plus 5. So whenever a fraction works, you're going to take a moment to, to factor a constant out from this quotient, and then guess where you distribute it. You're going to distribute it into this binomial right here, and it's going to be exactly what he needs. So look at this. 2 times x is 2x minus 1. And then our cubic is 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 8x plus 5. So whenever you have a fraction, you're going to factor a constant out of there, clean that up a little bit, and now this is actually a smaller cubic to do our list with. At this point, you can keep using these PRZs, or if you'd like, you can make a new list of PRZs. 
Now I know that 1 didn't work before, so 1 is certainly not going to work now. 1 half worked, it might work again, it's not totally exhausted, but what some people do is they say, hey, wait a second, let's make a new list of PRZs just to kind of speed things up a little bit. So the new and improved list of PRZs would be plus minus 1, plus minus 5, and then over plus minus 1, plus minus 3. So our answers are 1, 5, 1 third, and 5 thirds. So it does cut down on your list of numbers to try. Um, the ones didn't work before, so they're not going to work again. I'm not going to test one half again, but you like to buy a hint again. All right, we're going to start way over here. Let's try 5 thirds. I just have a great feeling about this one. 5 thirds. And we're going to use these smaller numbers right here. So our job right now is to take this cubic and go ahead and break it up. Could we do factor by grouping? Is there something in common, the 3 and the 2 with the 8 and the 5? No. Okay, so let's go do our synthetic division. Okay, we're going to drop down the 3. So what we need to do here is 5 divided by 3 times by 3. That's just a 5. Add those together and get a 3 again. 5 divided by 3 times by 3 It's just a 5. Negative 3. 5 divided by 3 times by negative 3 is negative 5. And look at that, it worked. So let's go ahead and write our f of x in factored form. So don't forget to write f of x. Okay, we still have this, this first factor that we found, 2x minus 1. The 0 that worked is 5 thirds, so I'm going to say x minus 5 thirds. And then our quotient here is 3x squared plus 3x minus 3. Now remember what I said, when we have a fraction that works, we're going to have to clean this up a little bit. So we're going to factor out a constant. Guess what number? Take out a 3. He's going to love that 3. So when we factor out the 3, where do you distribute it? You factor out of this guy, and it's going to go into this guy. I think I'll do that all at once here. I took it out and wrote it, and then I officially put it in two steps. I'm just going to do it in one step. So the 3 is going to get multiplied by the x, and distribute a 3 right there, you get a 5. And our quadratic is just that. So once you get down to a quadratic, you can just factor by hand. Oh, we're having trouble factoring? Well, if you're having trouble factoring, then what do we use? the quadratic formula. So come over here and do some work. So I kind of make the left-hand side all my work, and then my right-hand side are my, my um, polynomials. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus radical 5, and they're each over a 2. Who gets divided by 2? Each of them. All right, so what I like to do is write these as two separate answers. x equals x equals. It gets a little easier when you're plugging it in if you see the zeros. So negative 1 half plus radical 5 halves. And then we have um, negative 1 half minus radical 5 halves. So now we're going to go ahead and write our final answer over here. Okay, f of x equals, our first fraction is 2x minus 1, 3x minus 5, and here comes the last two factors. Remember, you have to start with x, and then you have to subtract, change, change. So it's going to be plus 1 half minus radical 5 halves, and the last set of parentheses, don't forget to put x, plus 1 half plus radical 5 halves. And let's just do a quick brain check. Is this a good factored form? 2x times 3x is 6x times x times x. I'm getting a polynomial here that starts off as 6x to the fourth. Let's see. 6x to the fourth. Perfect. It worked. Okay. 
don't forget to write your x's. Sometimes when the zeros are so big like that, people forget the x. It has to be a fourth degree polynomial. Okay, now we're going to take a look at imaginary numbers. Just do a little refresher on this. Okay, so what are real numbers? Like 2, pi, that's even real, um, radical 5, okay, they could be rational, irrational, they could be negative 7, those are all real. Now, what's imaginary? It's when you have a radical with a negative underneath. And remember, you got to poke your eye out, right? you got to poke your eye out. So the, the negative and the radical becomes an I. And now we just have radical 3. Now, the I is clearly out of the radical, so make sure your radical sign stops. The number stays in the radical unless you can simplify this. If it was radical 4, I would just say 2. But you got to poke your eye out. So if you take the reals, plus all these imaginaries, what are they called? They're called the complex. So starting now, we might be doing some complex work. If you can't get it factored with reals, then let's try using some imaginaries. Some basic I calculations. You really need to memorize this. Okay, we need to make sure we know this. So I is the square root of negative 1. And whenever you have a negative on a radical, you write i. Now, what's i squared? Well, it's negative 1 square rooted times another negative 1 square rooted. And a radical times a radical cancel each other out, and we get negative 1. Okay, when I say i squared, you say negative 1. i squared. Did you say negative 1? Okay, i cubed is i squared times i. All right, when I say i squared, what do you say? Negative 1, and we have the i, so negative i. i to the fourth is i squared times i squared. When I say i squared, you say negative 1 times another i squared, negative 1, which makes a positive 1. So I really want you to look at these, okay? You need to memorize the four basic I calculations. Anything more than that, it just turns into one of these. So what some people say, well, I notice here that the odds, that the odd ones, they have I's. But the even powers simplify to just ones. Those are the evens. Okay, so take a look at those four. Now, we're going to do calculations with it. For example, what's i to the fifth? Well, you want to take four i's. Our goal in life really is to get four i's. That's great. That's just a one. So i to the fifth is i to the fourth times another i. Okay, i to the fourth is just equal to a one, but we'll have one i left over. Okay, so you try to find chunks of four i's if you can. Here's another one. How about i to the 17th power? How does that simplify? Well, we've got i to the 16th times i. What's i to the 16th? That's four i's and four i's and four i's and four i's. Every time we have i to the fourth, that makes a one. So this one right here just makes a 1, and then we have i left over. You try to find sets of 4. All right, what if we have i to the 38th power? Let's find a multiple of 4. i to the power of 36. Isn't that 4 times 9? But then there'd be 2 i's left over. So i to the 36th. This just makes a 1. And when I say i squared, you say negative 1, which makes 1 times negative 1 a negative 1. Okay? If you're having trouble with this, ask me to explain it again tomorrow when we're working on our problems. Complex numbers are always written in the standard form. Please pay attention to this. A plus or minus B i. Okay? And so the A is the real part. And the bi here, this is the imaginary part. The imaginary part. And so, you take the real part, but then you put plus minus on the imaginary part. 
for example, let's state a complex number. Here's one, 3 minus 4i. You always put the real part first and the imaginary part after. Now, up until yesterday, we didn't have any imaginary parts, so we just had 3. 3 plus no imaginary part. But today, we might have some imaginary part added on to it. Okay, so we're going to do some calculations and write these things in standard form. All right, how do you add imaginaries? Well, you add the real with the real and the imaginary with the imaginary. So tell me the real part first, 5 plus 8. 13. And now tell me the imaginary part, minus 1i. That's all you got to do. Here, maybe we could distribute, distribute a negative, and then add our like terms. So first we have... 12i plus 3 times 2 is 6i squared. Oh, I said i squared. When I say i squared, you say negative 1 minus 6 plus 7i. So let's rewrite this as minus 6 minus 6 plus 7i. Okay, and now we're going to add these like terms. Tell me the real part first negative 12, and the imaginary part is plus 19i. That is written in standard form. Okay, I've got a couple more here. The first thing I'll do is distribute. Okay, let's FOIL the first is 25. The outers is minus 10i. The inners is plus 10i, and the last is minus 4i squared. Oh, when I say i squared, you say negative 1. Okay, the middles here are going to cancel. So I've got 25 plus 4, so the answer is 29. Hey, what are these things called when one gets a plus and one gets a minus? It starts with a C, O, N, conjugates. Those are conjugates. Okay, we got one more here. We need to simplify i cubed. So look at the chart or tell me what i cubed is. i cubed is negative i minus 7. Ooh, what's i squared? Negative 1 minus 4. Ooh, what's i to the fourth? A positive 1. So I've got negative 11i plus 7 minus 4. Don't forget to put this in standard form. The real part is 3 minus 11i. Have a great night.